Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Brittany. So over the next few months, I'm going to be making some tutorials all about chocolate transfer sheets and the different ways that you can use them. But today I'm going to be showing you how you can use them with hand dipped chocolates. I'll be dipping some square caramels and some Oreos, and this is a really easy way to add a little something to your hand dipped chocolates. There are so many transfer sheet designs and patterns that you can buy. These are the three that I'm going to be using today. They're kind of Valentine's-y. We've got the XO with hearts, some cute little lips, and my favorite, these little heart and circle lollipops. If you like learning new things about chocolates, cake decorating, or themed desserts, don't forget to subscribe. I post a new video every Thursday. Okay, so to get started, here are the supplies you're going to need. First of all, your chocolate transfer sheets, of course. A sheet tray to put your dipped chocolates on. This will make it easy to transfer it over to the fridge. I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be dipping caramels. I am using Peter's caramel. It's so easy, it tastes really good. Then you don't have to worry about making it homemade. I'm also going to be dipping some Oreos, which are super easy, you don't have to prepare anything. If you have them, some little chocolate dipping tools can be helpful, or you can use an offset spatula, or you can even use just a fork from your kitchen. You'll also want a deep bowl that you'll be able to dip your chocolates into. Um, I'm using this glass bowl so you can see what I'm doing, but you will not want to melt your chocolate in glass because glass tends to trap in the heat and sometimes it can make you burn your chocolate. So that's just a tip. Always melt your chocolate in plastic. And of course, you'll need some chocolate. Today I'm going to be using a compound chocolate so that I don't have to mess with tempering. I'll be using these white chocolate candy melts and these are Van Leer dark chocolate snaps that I'm using as well. And as always, I will link all of these supplies down in the description box to make it easy for you. All right, so before I'm ready to dip, I just need to cut my caramel square. So I've opened my box of Peter's caramel and I'm going to cut off a slice. Try to cut it in about the thickness that you want your caramels to be. And try to cut it evenly. This one looks pretty good. And then I'm going to trim one edge so that it's straight and do the width of the size of caramel that I want. And then another one. And I'm just setting the scraps aside. I can use them for another project later by melting them down. Trim the edge to be square. And like that. And set that aside. This one looks like it can make two. Just setting them aside on a parchment paper. My caramels are pretty thick, so you know you can cut them thinner by just cutting a smaller slice off to begin with, like this. The other way you can get caramel squares is to melt down. So if you have all these scraps like this, oh, they're stuck to the camera. No, I dropped one. <laughs> the other way you can get squares is to melt all your scraps down really carefully in the microwave at 30 seconds at a time. And then once it's melted, take a sheet tray with the silicone baking mat on and just pour it out and smooth it. And then lay another silicone sheet on top and smooth it. Stick it in the fridge till it's set up. And then you'll have a full sheet of caramel you can just cut in squares. So you can do it either way. I'm just doing it like this because my block is very fresh and it's pretty easy to just cut them like this. Now I'm going to prepare my transfer sheets by cutting them into squares big enough to be able to cover my full caramel or my full Oreo. And keep in mind as you're handling the transfer sheets, they are heat sensitive. I have really, really hot hands, so I like touch these once and they melt. So I'm going to just like grab them on the edges and try to touch the pattern as little as possible. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so here's how I set up my workstation. I've got a sheet tray with a parchment paper to place the chocolates on. I have my forks here, and I've got my nice deep bowl for dipping and the things that I'm going to dip, my caramels and Oreos. And then I have placed the transfer sheets on the edge of the counter like this so that they're easy to grab. And before we get started dipping, I just wanted to tell you three of the most important things to keep in mind while you're dipping. One, don't let your chocolate get too cool. As you're dipping, you'll see the edges of your chocolate start to set up. If that happens, rewarm it before continuing. If your chocolate gets too cool, it won't be hot enough to melt the cocoa butter on the transfer sheets and adhere to the top. Two, place the transfer sheet on immediately after dipping your chocolate and as quick as possible. And that's basically the same issue. You won't have enough warmth to melt through to the cocoa butter on the transfer sheet. And three, once the transfer sheet is on the chocolate, don't move it or adjust it or it might smudge. All right, so I've melted my dark chocolate first in a plastic bowl and I'm going to transfer it to my glass bowl so you can see what I'm doing better. And then before I dip my first caramel, I'm going to choose which transfer sheet I want. Make sure the cocoa butter or the textured side is facing up and I'm going to set it on the edge just behind the bowl where I can grab it really quickly to get it straight onto my caramel after it's dipped. So I just drop it in, push it down, and then smooth the chocolate over top of it. And with the caramels, they like to stick to the fork. So I'm going to use my second fork to help me transfer it onto the parchment. So I'm tapping off the extra and then wiping off the extra. And then with the second fork, I'm trying to just lift it up a little and then set it down. Then immediately place the transfer sheet on and you can give it a little press without moving it too much. And then you just repeat those steps. Oh, plopped it right in. Oh, I didn't get my transfer sheet ready. I'm going to set that there. Find the bottom of the caramel here. Grab my other fork. And lift it out. Tap it, wipe it lift it. This is like playing bop it. Bop it. Twist it. Tap it. And then set it down. Transfer sheet. Oh, I can still use it. Set it down. Tap, tap, tap. Done. Now you're just going to do the same thing with the Oreo. Before I dip the Oreos, I'm going to <laughs> rinse off my forks with hot water. Now I have a nice clean fork. Now the Oreos tend to slide off the fork easier, so I really only need one. And I will grab my transfer sheet. So same thing, I'm tapping it down. And if there's a bubble on top, you can just re-dip it and try to smooth it over like that. The bubbles will also come off when you tap it. Aww. And you might lose it, which is okay. Wipe, and then the Oreo slides right off and it's nice and clean. Then I'll get my transfer sheet right on. Tap it on like that.
And once you're all done dipping your chocolates, just place your tray in the fridge for about 10 minutes to set up. So all you do is just peel the transfer sheet off and it should look nice and shiny and smooth. And you just do all of them like that. If any of them are patchy, that will be a sign that you didn't get the transfer sheet on quick enough. Now I also wanted to show you if you don't apply your transfer sheet quick enough or if your chocolate's too cool, what will happen? It won't be able to melt all the cocoa butter through and so you will lose some of your pattern. Thanks so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please let me know by giving it a like or a comment down below. And if you have any specific videos you'd like to see me make, go ahead and comment that as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet, today's the day. If you'd like to see other chocolate videos, just click on one of these thumbnails and I'll see you in one week. Bye.